Hey everybody, my name is Adam Repos Vox, and welcome back to another tutorial for Windows 10. In this video, I'm going to show you a way to a new way to customize your Windows 10 installation. And this is something I showed on Windows 8 and Windows 7, but it hasn't been available for Windows 10 until lately. And on November 17th, they just patched this up to work with recent Windows 10 updates. But keep in mind, this is a program that will likely break anytime there's huge major updates to Windows 10. So that's just something to keep in mind. But it's called 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker. And it does a lot for your Windows 10, your Windows experience, and especially Windows 10 now. And so it's something I really wanted to get going here on Windows 10. And they finally got it updated. So you're going to want to download the installer from their website and run the 7TT up setup.exe select your language add shortcuts you don't need to add a desktop shortcut because it's something you're going to want having running automatically on system startup tell it where to install i'm actually going to tell it over here on a secondary solid state drive where i keep other programs install and then run and set to run at startup both should be checked because if it doesn't run at startup you don't get the tweaks automatically at startup all right, here we have some options, some good old options. Let me minimize this so we have some contrast here. All right, so this is a cool app that customizes a lot about Windows. All right, so you can hide the start button. You can hide the show desktop button, which I'm actually going to do because I accidentally click it or mouse over it all the time, and it screws me up. You can display seconds on the clock. I'm actually going to have that enabled. You can reserve empty space on the taskbar for spacing purposes. You can do lots of stuff, so make sure you go through the options and figure it out. But it does a lot primarily with the taskbar and explorer. All right, here, let me, how do I want to go about this? Because there's a lot that you can do here. I'm going to start with grouping. I, I, I don't mess with these a whole lot. I'm going to start with the grouping stuff. So you can have a group tabs on the taskbar here by application ID, which is the default, which means if you have a bunch of windows of the same program up, it's just going to put them together. Or you can tell it not to do that. And then you saw it kind of spaced things out a little bit here. Uh, I don't really have any windows separate. But if I say if I open up a new window of Chrome and now put another window icon over here instead of grouping it on top of that one or stacking it on top of that one, by default, it'd have them on together. However, you can have the active group down here decombined, which means when you have a program open, it has those windows separate, so you can switch between them. So I'm going to check that, and then if I open up a couple new Chrome windows, since I have Chrome open, it has all of these as separate taskbar icons. But if I switch over here back to 7 Taskbar Twigger, the Chrome tabs stacked back on top of each other, which is extremely convenient for me, and was especially convenient when I was still in school and had a bunch of Word documents open because having to mouse over and then select the thumbnail was pretty obnoxious. So having it to where you just open up and then you have them all right there is really cool. Now by default down here, if you click on a big stack of item, of combined items, it pops up the thumbnail preview. However, you can have that cycle through the windows or open up the last inactive window, which is actually pretty cool. So if I mouse over everything and then click on this, it's going to automatically open the last window I had open here, which is very, very convenient because if you just mouse over something real quick, it saves you just a couple clicks of switching between windows here. It, it It's minor click time, but it, it saves you a lot of time. You can change what the middle click does on taskbar icons, which by default it opens up a new instance of that program, but you can change it to switch through, close it. Close it is actually what I normally use or minimize it. You can change if you drag a file onto an app instead of pinning to it, you can tell it to open with it. I'm actually going to leave that on pinning. Hovering, you can either show the thumbnail preview or open up lists, tooltips, etc. Thumbnails, you can select it to drag to reorder them. So if I mouse over this, I can actually reorder the windows, which is pretty convenient, especially if you don't have that open last window thing checked. Left click on the active thumbnail minimizes it. This is actually a problem for me. Um, I don't leave it on, but it can be a time saver if you use a lot of the same program. Remove extra gap between icons. Okay, watch my taskbar. See it now? It's pretty small because I'm at 4K and running small icons. But if I check it, boom. Super compact. I have so much taskbar space. It is amazing. And then tell it to open them with double click. I don't actually use that. Some people like double clicking. I don't. And then right clicking either does the jump list or the standard windows menu. 
I will do the standard menu because now if I right click it, it opens up that menu, whereas you can automatically drag up. If you cl hold click and drag up, it will open up that menu. So there's no reason to have right click take that up as well. Then over here you have some other options involving the mouse and other things. For example, you can mouse wheel to cycle between them. You can you can do a lot of stuff. I don't actually do a whole lot with that. Um, even the volume thing doesn't do a whole lot for me. I'm going to enable that. So if I scroll here, it actually changes volume just by scrolling, which can be convenient. I don't want to do the whole taskbar because sometimes I just scroll on accident. If you middle click on empty space, you can tell it to pull up stuff. Double click on empty space. Same thing. I'm going to tell it to do... I don't know. And there's nothing I really want to do there. Okay. So that, for the most part, is it. But it is a lot of really good updates that you can do. And then you can have it tell it to automatically run its startup and check for updates. And then you can do things like that. And then it has the taskbar inspector. Which just kind of shows you what all is open here. It's kind of like a mini task manager. Not anything I really want. Now I have to get rid of it. Because it's in my way. Nope, stop. Stop that. Okay. There was one final setting for this that I totally missed. That I was trying to figure out where the hell it was. And that is under the decombine. I just totally didn't pay attention to it. Check on mouse hover and check and show la labels. And that means when a window is active, it'll actually show you what the window title is. But only when it's active, or only when you mouse over the group. That way, when you're using it, you get the information that you need. But when you're not using it, it disappears, which is very, very useful. So this is 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker, an extremely useful program, in my opinion, for making your Windows experience better. Frankly, the removing gap between items is my favorite, as I like having a super compact compact taskbar so I can have a lot of stuff open and this makes that so much easier to do and actually I'm not using small taskbar icons I'm just on 4k so it looks a lot smaller if I use small icons <laughs> you'd barely see the freaking thing like that is the tiniest looking taskbar in the world but I kind of like it it gives you a lot of extra screen space so if you right click the taskbar and go to properties you can choose use small taskbar icons and just have this very teeny tiny set of icons. And actually, I don't want to be that person, but if I put it on the top, I think that might be easier for me to see. So I'm going to try that out for a bit. But you have lots of options, but I just wanted to show you this real quick. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more awesome tech videos. And otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. See you next time.